So we I got a couple of different stuff set up first. I got Atom. Um, <laughs> so I don't have to use Jetty to edit code. Uh, and it kind of looks a bit nicer. And I basically got it run, got it running, got it to run. So what I did is um, I basically, I'm so stupid. I realized that um, <laughs> I actually didn't realize Anaconda comes with Python. <laughs> so I was basically, uh, anyway. Um, so I installed the 3.7 version. Uh, which is the newest one, and that solved the problem with the with some of the requirements, but it still has it still shows me one conflict or one issue where it's like the um, it tells me that uh, da -da 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 -da. let me see if I can open uh, uh, no what, what do I want I wanted to open the requirements file doesn't matter anyway um. Basically, the TensorFlow version they didn't seem to match. I think in the requirements file, uh, cannot I just open the file? Open, open file. No, file. Open file. The requirements. So. So here it says TensorFlow 1.6. Um, that kind of didn't work for me, so I had to use um, one point, I think, 14 or something like that. So it basically tells me not TensorFlow, TensorFlow 1.7. That also didn't work. It's, I, I modified that anyway. The, pr the the thing here is TensorFlow seems to have a where was the install requirements, install requirements, install requirements. So tens TensorFlow, it actually found I, I finally ended up putting this, putting like bigger greater than 1.14 because 1.7 or 1.6 was not working for me. It, it was saying there's no such version available. But now that I got one, it just tells me it's incompatible with TensorFlow because TensorFlow expects something below 1.7 and above 1.3. Uh, sorry, something with st strawberry fields is incompatible. Ah, ugh. strawberry fields uh, 0 0.9 is has the requirement that TensorFlow needs to be uh, version you know below 1.7. But it it didn't complain more. Aside from that, and then when I try to run the example, I get the following. So let me show you. Um, so when I try to run the example, so it seems like it's starting, but then it just breaks. Of course, if, apart from a couple of warnings, but it's like eigenvalues, this is this, and then it says that in line. It, it says that in line, uh, where's that? In line, in line 92 in train evaluate circuit, right? So this is here. It tells me that the, um, uh, that the learn, it seems like there's like an empty thing because it says, Key is not a valid hyperparameter. Um, and of course, breaks in inside the learner object or class file from QMLT. But it, which is kind of what's uh, Circuit learner. But on the other side, it doesn't seem like, because I was taking a look at it, it doesn't seem like there's any. Because uh, I wanted to print that. Can I just print that? I have never used Python before. Really? Can I just print that like that? Print. Print. This work. So, function. Print, 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 print. 
so when I do these, so okay, so we've got like these. This thing here. Right. Which if I just go to um, Jensen pretty come on. Come on, come on, come on. So, okay, because it has a function. Regular regularizer is a method, and then is a bound method. But it is no, there's no empty key. <laughs> I don't see an empty key, so I don't know why this complains. And again, I don't know. Maybe this is maybe this is an issue with the with the with the versions. Maybe this is because of whatever issue with the versions, you know. And that kind of sucks. So I'll I'll see if I can I'll see if I can give it another try. And but maybe maybe Miha can give me sort of a uh, a little bit of help here with that. Uh, with getting the requirements correct, maybe maybe I should get an earlier version of Python. Maybe I should install. Uh, maybe I should install um, TensorFlow myself. Maybe maybe I should install TensorFlow myself. TensorFlow Ubuntu. Um, maybe. If I what, what is if I do TensorFlow so go packages Python three. So Python virtual environment. This fact I already installed, skip to the next step. Um oh yeah, everyone's like create a virtual environment, but it's like if I don't if you want to. Maybe I should probably do that. Maybe I should probably do that. Um, did you want to know? Is the package you want to know? System install. Ah, the package URL here. Okay, Python 3.7. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess I'm gonna use whatever. Okay, but and then so I should I could use this. Okay. This and the and then the package URL. So I could say paste. And then go, and I'll take, I don't know, the one with GPU support. Paste. Yeah, but that installs uh, TensorFlow 1.14, and I don't want 1.14. Why does strawberry fields require? Is that project so old? I mean, the 114 is the one that I have installed. So that's not what I want to do.
That's not what I want to do. So TensorFlow um, 1.6. Here, 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 here. No, but here, okay, it gets me the content here, latest news. Okay, here you have. So this is the version, this is what I want. Okay. I mean, let's see if that works. Okay. That's not supported. Uh, mm, so I guess me, I've got to update the requirements. Uh, it seems like, and maybe just uh, pip install strawberry fields. Because maybe strawberry fields actually, um, maybe, just comes with a new version and just uh, which is then compatible with that and then essentially no it's python that's the following libraries python so to use to refills with tensorflow version 1.3 or tens tensorflow version of your tensorflow is required this can be installed alongside strawberry field as follows okay uh -huh. Okay, interesting. So what if I, I didn't know that. So what if I do that, like that? It cannot find the version. You see, no matching distribution for this. Should be the notebook. Come on. 1.3? Really? That's awkward. I mean, what if I just install the latest strawberry fields? But it is already the latest because I just do this. this. Ah, whatever. Look, um, I'll just reach out to me how maybe there is something that I'm missing. But I'll, I'll, what I'll do then is I'll just um, I'll go ahead with the uh, QA or A uh, that I was taking a look at. Uh, Q A or A. So this was this is basically exactly where I was at, and I left. I left. So this is an explanation of the max cut of the max cut problem with the graph, and I left here where. So here you could see the creation of of the circuit of the parametrized circuit. Mm. Mm -hmm. And exactly, I was here. Q A O A. How does it work? So this is what I wanted to go through today. Um, the easiest way to look at Q A O A. It's just how I, I, I there's a it's just weird to pronounce. Is to think about only about inputs and outputs. I don't know the other thing we need to. So the only thing we need to solve max cap problem is a graph, which we pass to the instance of max cap QAOA class. But if you look into its body, you will see inside we use QAOA class with a little more advanced version of the following line. Connection mm -hmm. qubit steps. Connection is just a regular API connection, so we tell QAOA how it should talk to the forest cloud. Qubits are the same qubits that we used earlier. Steps is an integer which specifies how long our, our quantum program will be. By default, it's equal to one, and that's the value we use in our max cut example. We will run to, we'll return to this later. Um, cost ham is the cost function. No, I know cost cost operators. 
It's how we encode our problem. This is where all the information about our graph sits, and it's encoded as a combination of Pauli operators. Mm, how encode, what changes are possible in the realm of our problem? Driver operators, OK. That's how we encode what changes are possible in the realm of our problem. In MaxCat QAOA, we say that we can flip every qubit from 0 to 1. Again, we use only Pauli operators to create it. Okay. Um, angles, what are these angles? In dictionary with the minimizer arguments, as you can see, we can draw the specific minimization method. These options, net, options, blah, blah, blah. You may wonder why it minimizes since we want to find a maximum cut it's due to the nice property of the minimization problems. Yeah, it's just minimization of the same problem, but with a minus. Yeah. Since most of these algorithms are stated in terms of minimization, we stick to this convention. Okay. Um, after we have all that, we need to run the actual algorithm, and algorithm to find the right angles. Then we create a quantum program which gives a solution to the problem. We specify it with the cost operators. Uh, yeah, but still one of those angles. What are those angles? Mm. How to encode our problem? Uh, since the max, since in max cut we want to create, a, we want to create two subs typo. Two sets of nodes, given node is either in set A or B. Where the sum, so the sum goes through all the pairs of nodes and values. Where the sum goes. So that's the cost function. It's the, it's the sum of okay, all the pairs of nodes and values z, i are equal to 1. If Given node is in the set A and minus one. Okay, yeah. If given node is in the set A and minus one is it's in the B. Mm. And W Y J is the weight of the of a given edge, which in our current example is equal to one. Okay. So what this is basically, so this is basically saying is that if, because if then, if they're both If one is in A and another one is in B, right? I know, but this is that J. Okay. So, wait, wait a second. It's one if it's in A, and if the other one is in A, then then we have a zero. If they're both in B, it's both minus one. So minus one times minus one is one. So then it's also zero. And if they're in A and B, Then it oh, turns out to be minus one. So then it's like one plus one, two. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of 
Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of, I, I would expect it to be set up differently because if this is just, then if we're going to minimize the cost that's favoring, yeah, whatever, we'll see. Um, it turns out that we can construct a matrix which corresponds to this cost function using, using only poly operators. How convenient. <laughs> it's an identity matrix which can also be considered as a special poly matrix. What does it look like in code? Um, Hmm. Oh, what I bet is in gammas. So, max cut graph for edge. In first graph, at edge graph equals max cut graph copy. Cost of this for Y and J in graph edges. Cost operators append Pauli term Z So this is the I don't know. So this is basically this part in here. The plus instead of a minus and then uh, okay. I mean you have the minus here yeah but that's kind of the cost function okay so I'm the, uh, this is how we encode our cost operators so now let's go to the driver operations mm -hmm. they specify how our state can change in this basic case let's say that we allow every key to just change from zero to one or otherwise, this means that we need a bunch of X gates, which corresponds to the to this. Okay. But still, what do you what do you what do you mean? I guess I guess changing from zero to one probably means switching a, no, a node from from one group to another. Maybe. I don't quite get either. What is this like? How? What is the specified powder term X? Okay, it's like the X gate, but like this. You didn't really bother with the poly sum function. It's here just so that the input type is correct, but it doesn't play any other role. And that's it. Now let's try to actually run the QA by ourselves. When in class method, first put the values of delta, values of gammas. Also, now you have all the tools to use QA or A, except the most important one, knowing how it actually works. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so we check the cost function. But I mean, so far, there's nothing here that is like weirdly out of the normality. I mean, sure, you can, you probably don't understand what is it, like, why is this, why do you need to do matrices in here? Why, why you need to represent it this way? What about is in gamma? Okay. Imagine you're in the mountains and you want to find the lowest value. In this analogy, if we use the classical gradient descent method, you will start from one point and climb downwards until we until we can't find anything better. Most of the classical algorithms work this way. You are you are you are moving around the mountain range to find this valley. Here is a little bit different. You start with some simple landscape and standing in the lowest point. 
then very, very slowly, the mountains start erecting from the ground. If this means that the minimum shift, if this means that the minimum shifts, you do a little step. In the end, the mountains are the same as they were in the previous example, and you are standing in the lowest valley. What's happening here is the adiabatic transformation from some initial Hamiltonian. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's happening here is the adiabatic transformation from some initial Hamiltonian to the Hamiltonian representing our problem. Ah, okay. It is proven that if it's done slowly enough, the ground state, state of the motion of the energy Hamilton will transform smoothly into the ground state of the final Hamiltonian. It is it is also no it is also how the quantum annealers work, like the wave. I kind of remember that a little bit. Because that was like you define an energy function that's basically that's basically you know defines that landscape. I think it was something like you were defining like sort of your energy function, and and then you know that had its values and whatever, and and so the annealing process finds finds those things just by virtue of nature. Um, one of the problems is that using Ergetes quantum computer or any other gate based machine, we cannot do this transformation in infinite number of in, in an infinite number or infinite decimal steps. We need to set how many steps we want, we want. And this is what steps parameter does. The more steps we have, the higher chance we will get the good result. But we also need more gates and running the algorithm gets longer and longer. Also, it means we have more betas and gammas to optimize. Yeah, but still, in this metaphor, betas and gammas tell you how exactly should you add new mountains in each step. For those of you who prefer equations over metaphors, below is the short version of how it works. We start with some definitions and then go to the explanations. Okay, this initial state. This is the case of steps equals to. If you're not familiar with this notation, here's a step by step description of what it of what does it mean in practice. Let's take some initial state, state get S. Evolve the state using the operator in this. Evolve the state farther using the rest of operators from right to left. Evolving, evolving is just a fancy name for changing. And now, if values of angles better and these are the right ones, we get a state which is a ground state of the Hamiltonian defining our problem, which should correspond to the solution to our solution. If you wonder why we call angles, it's because we respond to rotations by angles and, and some and in some high dimensional space. Okay. QA or A is an iterative algorithm, which in every situation uses the quantum and the classical part. Quantum, prepare quantum state based on the current values, measure the state, repeat many times to get some statistics. Here we use some classical optimization method, example, the Nelder, Nelder Mead, Mead algorithm, and in each iteration, then we perform the quantum operations to evaluate how good our current angles are. Okay, that's still, that still doesn't tell me something, which is, which is how is this created? Number of games. What's sort of the logic behind that? Like, hmm. I thought this would help me, but I don't see this right now. I really don't see this. What are the, what are betas and gammas? So the betas and gammas are. Basically, how to add new mountains in each step. Uh, it's like the metaphor is kind of cage, but it's still. Uh, how to find the right angles, the hybrid part. Additional resources. OK. 
Okay, so there's like a sorry, there's like a source code presentation, probably matrices, original Q and I mean Yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of glimpse now at that, and I, 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 yeah, that basically explains why this is defined, why this is defined like that. I guess the, like the Z. Uh, yeah. But it still doesn't tell me. So what is the Yeah, but it, like how 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 does so where is the lear, where's the learning part so to say is it is it the so here's a good presentation okay. um, Original paper, source code. Yeah. Da, 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 da. How to find the right angles. Prepare a quantum state based on the current values. So I guess this is what prepare. I guess this is then what kind of gives you whatever circuit. Measure the state, repeat many times to get some statistics, and then do and then here's like do whatever minimization algorithm to to choose the next angles but this is what i'm interested in like what I, I would like to know a little bit more about about how the angles like how do you how do how that this is the state prepared based like you know what i mean That's what's that's what's kind of confusing for me at that point because in the code in the code really all we can see is a bunch of parameters training parameters matrices gate structures right so for example gate structures list of lists where each such list con contains configurations of, a, of gate parameters. So in, the, in here, gate structures are, so you've got the S, S gate, D gate, and, K, and K gate. Is then this the the sort of equivalent here of the gates that the gates to be used? Because it seems at the end of the day, the whole the, the this this whole thing is. Um, I mean, you could you could in theory put in here any any gates like you would like, correct? So you could put also x gates, y like y gates, whatever party gates. It's just the fact that you're telling, is it, is, is this, is this the, you're kind of telling the, aren't these the, the driver operators? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm thinking. Driver, um, driver operators. So gate structures, max cut solvers here, gate structures. And where is this, where is this then used? Train valid circuit, gate name, build circuit, S gates, D gates, K gates. No, but here it is like hard coded that there must be S gates, D gates, and, and K gates. Hmm. 
QMLT is safe. Okay. Ukraine is circuit learner with gate structures. Where's the circuit learner? Ah. In the hack parameters, uh, the learning parameters. But in the gate structure, it's not in the learning parameters. So the gate structures are only used within the max time solver. Training and relational circuit adjusts the parameters of the circuit so the output minimizes the value of the loss function. After training is complete, the cost value of the final circuit value is generated. Okay. So basically, that. Um, self learner. Oh, but the learner gets the circuit parameters, and the final parameters are and this is what the final parameters are. Name value, final parameters, and then for gate, then it iterates over gates. Gate. Okay, and then and then it gets the parameters, final parameters. And if the gate name that you have is in the parameters, then you put it then it, then you put it in the final puts it in the final value, and then in gate will constant final value. So it gives it a value. Okay, I see that. So it uses it uses the gates. So it assigns values. This is this this loop here assigns the values to the gates based on whatever the circuit learner is telling, and get circuit output. What is the thing is how is it constructed? That's that's the it's for me the that's what I'm trying to figure out. How is the circuit constructed? And if I could run the pro, the the program, it would be quite cool. It's quite cool. So I will just. I'll just reach out to me how see if I can get the program running and then and then we'll try to do a bit of um um opening it up and then trying to understand where the circuit is, is is being built and how is how is this all working internally. I think that's gonna be probably uh probably the most uh the most interesting part of all this. Cool, perfect. I mean it's been an interesting journey, a bit long, but um let's see if we can get it running at least. Because <clears throat> it seems like the thing is you don't really need to know what the S gate does. To solve this and what the k gate does is just like it seems like you're choosing those gates and then you're just arranging them parameterizing them and then learning what parameters work the best um yeah and then probably maybe there's a choice of gates that works even better i don't know that's the that's the feeling that's the feeling that i have um so still i feel a bit like fluffy fluffy i'm not so sure that I really get it in so intuitively I feel comfortable, but I'm not so sure that I really fully, fully understand that. So I might might give it another run um after I'm able to run the program. Let's 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 see. I mean about the whole QAOA thing as well. It's like the betas and the gammas kind of tell you how to move and uh, but still, like how, because Michal mentions, it talks about, about adiabatic quantum computing in here. And then here you do this with a gate base. So it's like what the gates basically give you the state, give you a state. And that state is the Hamiltonian sort of. So you're building that yourself because that state has a Hamiltonian. That Hamiltonian kind of can be represented as, as an energy function. And that defines that, that whatever landscape that you're talking about seems like this is what it means, but I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat>